Hi there, this is Marty from OwingsArt.com and thank you for stopping by today as we take a look at these Rembrandt watercolors. This is a pocket box kit. It comes with 12 half pans. It's made by the Royal Talons Company in the Netherlands. With a name like Rembrandt, um, you better be good uh, because if you don't know about the Dutch painter Rembrandt, you should look him up, but he's widely considered one of the greatest painters in history. He lived during the 15th century or the 1600s and he is quite famous for some uh, just incredibly beautiful paintings uh, that he did during his lifetime. So anyway, uh, Rembrandt paints made in the same place that Rembrandt lived and did all of his work uh, during that time period. And like I said, this pocket box is, this is a half pan kit. So there's a, if you go and look up a half pan and a full pan, these are the smaller pans. They come in this nice tin. Here's a little bit more on the watercolors themselves. And the entire line comes with 80 colors. You can get this kit in either a 12, 24, or 48 uh, pocket box kit. Um, once you get into the 48, it's a little less like a pocket box and a little bit more like carrying around a, a tin case of paints. But this is a really small, compact, portable kit that I recommend. Uh, Schmenke makes a similar kit, so does Lucas um, and other brands, but it's just easy to get around with. And you'll, you'll find that there are some kits out there that are plastic. You want to avoid those. The tin is much better. Well, here's that portable brush that comes with the kit. I believe it's a number four round, and it's a sable hair brush. And you can see right here, it, it's really small, fits nicely in the case. And you can see you get a little palette uh, with this tin as well. And um, you can tell when you open this box and you have the tin in your hand that there's some quality behind the workmanship in this little pocket box. I really like uh, what Royal Talons printed on the back of this box. It's a really nice quote, and I'll let you read it here, but it's about art and what art is. I just thought it was kind of cool to print something that, like that. It's inspirational. It's, it's kind of nice. And uh, today we're going to use a variety of paper, and I'm going to use one water brush from Pentel, which I've used a lot before, and if you watch my videos, you know about uh, those. So they come in, the half pans come in these wax wrappers, which are easier to take apart than some of the ones that come in the Schmincke or, Schmincke or uh, Lucas brands. But um, I really like them because they're resistant to water. And if you want to save them to remember the color or something like that, you can do that. Now, Sennelier, they, they print it on a plastic sheet that you can put over the watercolor so you never forget what color you have. And I think that's kind of handy as well. So once you remove all of the plastic wrap, uh, oh, by the way, yes, the, this, the pan holder lifts right out so you can clean the bottom of the pan out if you need to. Um, so the pans, once you get the pans out, you need to fold the aluminum holder back in a little bit. And then there's a trick to getting the pans to hold nice and tightly in here. And the trick really is to pop them in the right way. You'll see I'm going to demonstrate the wrong way to do it at first, and then I'll show you the right way. So these pans are really, you know, a half pan is small, but th this paint goes a long way. So you should have no problem getting a lot of uh, life out of these pans. So when I put these in, if you press against the back end first and just they click right in, that's the way to do it. Don't press the outside first and then click it in. So um, yeah, th like that, you wanna push into the hard end first and not the, uh, the short end. So see, you fold that aluminum in a little bit, and then if you push like, like that on the back, that's not the correct way to do it. Don't push the back, the looser uh, piece of aluminum there. Just press the pan into the hard end, so the lower end first, and then it snaps right in. You see I'm redoing those now because I didn't do it right in the first place. Now these three are going in right and they just snap. They make a little snap sound and then you know they're nice and tight and secure. Sorry, it's a little difficult to, uh, to explain visually, but there it is. Today I'm gonna use this Canson water board. This is really a nice heavy uh, board and there's a nice watercolor paper on top of it. So you can see it's, it's pretty heavy and nice to use. 
and in between swatches I'll just get get rid of the color on the um, on the water brush so you have nice pure paint being applied here So far, some colors do a little bit better than others. I'm not super impressed with the Viridian, but or the Emerald, whichever way you want to call it, that green right there in the middle between the ochre and the lighter green. That, um, it didn't really come out as vivid as I've seen other Viridians come out, and, um, but it's okay. I mean, it's fine, and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, um, I just had to, it wasn't as bright or it didn't pop as much as I had expected it to. Um, otherwise, all the other colors were, I think, quite nice, and they are very bright, and they pop off the page. You can see that here. So I try to have my videos be as clean as possible so that you're seeing the color uh, very directly. Here I'm just trying a little bit of mixing, there's blues and reds to get a purple. Next thing I'm going to do is try a little transparency test here. So I've got some Sennelier paper here. This is really nice watercolor paper. Um, it's hot press, so um, I, it's really smooth. And um, they come in these blocks, and so it's tricky to get the paper out of the block a little bit. Here, I'll uh, show you how to get it out. But basically, there's a little opening in the top, and you can put a small blade in there. Usually, it's loose enough that you can stick a finger in there and then just go along the edge, and it'll pop right out eventually. And then just careful when you tear it out of the actual block that you don't pick up any paper and rip the paper, but it, it usually comes out pretty nicely. You don't want to ruin the paper because it's fairly expensive if you use uh, Sennelier's watercolor paper. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some squares on here, some swatches, and then we'll dry those out. I'll use a hair dryer to dry this. I'm, you don't have to sit through that, but I'm going to paint the swatches on here, squares, and then we'll try some colors over it just to see how well um, the transparency works. Now, uh, Royal Talons or these Rembrandt paints make uh, a couple of things pretty clear in their uh, guide. So if you go to their website, they have a color guide and they'll talk about these. But basically they say that some colors are more transparent than others and you just have to know which ones so that you're on the safe side. Now you can see here the yellow is very transparent over that blue. You almost can see that it, it's going to turn green underneath. And the same for a couple of these other colors. The red, however, is much more opaque. And it says that in, in the uh, color guide. So there's little marks on the, on the paint wrappers when they come. So, but you'll have to remember that or refer to the color guide that's online to know which paint is more transparent than others. But as far as transparency goes, it was pretty good. Now here we're going to just compare the colors to some other watercolors. This is a Grumbacher, which is a uh, German watercolor. And you can see here, and it's an artist grade watercolor, so it's pretty comparable. Although I'd have to give the edge here to the Rembrandts, at least initially for that one. And then the next paints here are the Daniel Smiths, which if you watch my video, I've reviewed all of these colors before. So if you have an interest, uh, take a look at that. But here they're, they're pretty comparable to Daniel Smith, although um, I have to give a very slight edge to the Daniel Smiths just because the color is so vibrant. But again, on a color by color comparison, you might find some variation and that's okay. Here's the Lucas brand. This, these are the German uh, made ones I just reviewed not long ago. Really very inexpensive. Not sure how they do it yet, but I'm going to figure that out because they're about a third or a half the price of uh, water, other watercolor paints, and I just want to make sure that um, they're not using any weird binders or pigment boosters that won't last over time. So, but uh, I like using the Lucas for sketching, and they're comparable here, but I think I still give the edge to the Rembrandts. Now these are some student grade watercolors just for a comparison. So this, these are the Cotmans, 
and uh, you can see there by Windsor and Newton that the, the Rembrandts are much more vivid, much more deep, and they should be because they're artist grade. Here's a Daler and Rowney Aqua Fine, uh, which is a student grade, but I like the Daler and Rowney. I was really surprised by these watercolors, and you can see they're just about on par uh, for a very inexpensive watercolor. However, the one thing here with the Daler and Rowney is they're not quite as light fast as the Rembrandts. So um, we'll get to light fastness here in a minute, but I just, uh, and thank you for the YouTuber who sent me the suggestion just to slow down the video during the comparison portion so that you can actually see it better. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Here's the Dr. Mart, uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus, which I've also reviewed, which are excellent, super vibrant artist watercolors, but they're kind of like liquid watercolor or ink. And these are supposed to be very light fast. So they'd be on par with these Rembrandts. And you can see um, they, they are just a little slightly more vivid and uh, vibrant than the Rembrandts. Really, really deep, rich colors in the, in the P.H. Martins. Don't know how they do it exactly, but they managed to pull it off and it's pretty extraordinary. So just a word or two about light fastness claims. Uh, so Royal Talon says that these Rembrandt watercolors will last most of the colors, 70, 78 of the 80 colors will last 100 years in museum conditions. So under museum glass, in a temperature controlled setting, without any direct sunlight, with special lighting, they'll last that long. Now, what that means, what that translates to you is they'll probably last your lifetime and then some, but here's the thing with uh, these watercolors. If you, um, if you look at the two colors that aren't as light fast, which are the, I, I believe the Lake Matter, uh, the Matter Lake Deep, which comes in this set, it's a red color and the alizarin crimson doesn't come in the set but they rate those only for 10 to 25 years so they'll fade a lot faster and if you use a lot of alizarin crimson in your mixing of colors and stuff that's going to be a bummer for you so find a different color red uh, so the two reds are really not light fast so just a heads up on that I wanted you to know about that it, they also spell this out on their website and their color chart but you have to go look for it so on to the painting demonstration. So here I'm just going to do a light pencil outline of a bull and a bullfighter and then I'll get to the uh, painting. But uh, this is really, I'm really impressed with the paint so far and in the, in the testing on the swatches and stuff. I should mention that these come in five milliliter tubes as well and I think you can buy full pans and they come in some special edition sets if you want to use those. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some Payne's Gray, which is a really nice color in this set, just for some of the shadow area. And um, just to get that right first before I add any other color. So I'm going uh, dark to light with paint. So normally, I think in pencil work, you wanna go very light to dark. So if you're just doing graphite work, but in painting, as a general rule, uh, you go dark to light. So uh, that's just a, a tip for you there. So here I'm just uh, got the bullfighter all, uh, all the bull himself all shadowed in and now I'm just working on the bullfighter here. The more I worked on the bullfighter the less I liked him and uh, unfortunately that happens in painting sometimes. I really like the way the bull came out but the bullfighter uh, didn't really impress me uh, when I was finished with it and I tried to rework it and I just made it worse but Anyway, enough about that. Uh, that's art teaching you lessons. But um, here I'm going to use a little bit of the sepia color to get the rest of the bowl in. Overall, though, I really like how these paints go down. And you can see that the red pops and the other colors, although my palette is a little bit muted here, I really, liked, uh, I really like working with these paints. They're fun. They're on par with the Schmenkas and the other, like a Sennelier or a higher-end watercolor artist watercolor but they are very expensive so here's my final rankings you can see one from one to ten one being very poor ten being the vet best ever um, this got some pretty high rankings the problem I have with it is they're so expensive so uh, they probably lost a, a half a point or a full point in my overall ranking just because of cost really not within reach for many artists and especially if you're talking about trying to acquire all of the paint colors in the line it'd be really tough to do and when they come in tubes, the tubes are really small too, so that's something else to remember.
Well, I hope this has been helpful uh, to you and, and a good exploration of these Royal Talons Rembrandt watercolors. They're, they are really excellent. They're water, they're artist quality watercolors, so that's good. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, love to hear your thoughts, and don't forget to share the video with others if you found it helpful. Well, send me a note if you've had any experiences with these. I'd love to hear from you. Well, this is Marty for OwingsArt.com. Have a great day, everybody. So long for now.